From the Global Winnipeg Studios, News Final with Dan Grummet. Good evening and thanks for joining us. A group of animal advocates is trying to draw attention to what they're calling a case of neglect involving a Manitoba rancher and the horses she's caring for. Global News has obtained photographs showing the animals with sores on their hides, missing patches of hair, and with their rib cages visible. The woman looking after the horses says the animals came to her in that condition. She's currently trying to rehabilitate them. Global's Blair Malastravich reports on a protest held today right next to the woman's ranch. An elderly woman was killed today after trying to walk across the street. It happened at an intersection in Dauphin. RCMP say the 90-year-old was struck by an SUV being driven by an 80-year-old woman. No word on any charges. A highway crash just outside of Winnipeg has landed two people in hospital. This was the scene around 1230 this afternoon at highways 8 and 67, about 18 kilometers north of the perimeter. RCMP say about an hour earlier, one vehicle was heading east along 67 when it tried to cross Highway 8, but collided with a vehicle heading north. All injuries are believed to be non-life-threatening. A Manitoba family of seven lost their home and everything in it this week due to an arson fire. And their story seems to be tugging at the hearts of complete strangers. Earlier this week, this home on the Bloodvein First Nation was deliberately set ablaze and reduced to rubble. Its owners, Jason and Victoria Johnson, and their five children were not home at the time. They were in Winnipeg because their youngest son, a three-year-old, was being treated following a dog attack. Well, an Ontario woman came across their story online and encouraged the couple to set up a trust fund and is now campaigning for donations using social media. Then, Winnipegger Jay Mishkowski also saw the Johnson story and says he needed to help. He's been collecting everything from clothing to furniture to give to the family. The Johnsons tell Global News they're amazed at the outpouring of support and never dreamed of a response like this. Donations can be sent to the Assiniboine Credit Union on McPhillips Street. Details on how to donate can be found on our website, globalnews.ca slash Winnipeg. Meanwhile, two girls, a 12-year-old and a 14-year-old, are facing arson charges in connection with that fire. A group of concerned citizens is hoping to persuade politicians to build the next phase of rapid transit around what they call their backyard. A rally was held at the Parker Wetlands today. These Winnipeggers are hoping City Council will change its mind about taking the transit route through that area, just south of Taylor Avenue near Waverly. Known for its aspen forest and tall prairie grass, rally organizers say the wetlands is worth keeping. City Council voted back in March to have the next phase of rapid transit run through the Parker Wetlands. It's time for an early look at weather. It was a pretty nice day in Winnipeg and most of southern Manitoba. A little bit breezy at times. Unfortunately, tomorrow might not be as nice as it was today if you happen to like sunshine. Right now in Winnipeg, mainly clear and 22 degrees. Our high today was 24. We have a south wind steady at about 22 kilometers per hour. It'll stay from the south overnight into the morning hours. Temperatures across the province still in the low 20s for the most part. 21 for Pinawa and Steinbach, 20 for Kenora, and otherwise 22 unless you're 19 in Melita. In the north, we're looking at warm temperatures as well as you still see that patch of yellow where it's 24 in Thompson, 21 in Island Lake, 20 in Norway House, 21s in Lynn Lake and Flin Flon. Overnight in Winnipeg, just a few clouds in the sky before they start to move in. Our low is 14, as I mentioned, that south wind continuing, probably around the 30 mark. That'll continue to gust into the morning hours, but it getting increasingly cloudy and the sun starts to disappear as we have a chance of showers move in. I'll have more on that coming up in our full Sky Tracker forecast later in the show. There were colorful dragons doing battle on the river today, all for a good cause. <laughs> Hundreds came out for day two of the annual Dragon Boat Festival in support of the Canadian Cancer Society. The event brings in teams from Kenora, Regina and all over the southern half of Manitoba. Organizers say the festival is about honoring and remembering those who have lost their battle with cancer and for people still fighting it. Organizers are hoping to raise $200,000 this year, all of which will go to programs and cancer research here in our province. Well, it's not every day that kids get to fly upside down on a trapeze. As we showed you earlier this week on Global News, Kids Fest has taken over the grounds of the Forks. Learning the trapeze is just one of the many workshops at the festival. Performers and musicians come from all over the world to partake in the action. Tomorrow is the last day for the festival. Activities and performances are planned for the entire day. Here's a question for you. When you think of seniors, do you think of blue hair and bingo or skateboards? How this group of sassy seniors is debunking all the stereotypes 
one prank at a time. That story's next. The Evening News with Dan Grummet. Good evening and thanks for joining us. We'll soon have a better idea of what's coming up the river. The province is expected to release its second flood outlook tomorrow. This week, Fargo, North Dakota is expected to declare a state of emergency because it's expecting a top five flood event. But as Lorraine Nickel reports, one rural municipality isn't waiting around to hear Manitoba's forecast and is already making preparations for a major flood. A Winnipeg man says he thought he heard people banging on the side of his house. Boy, was he wrong. The sound he heard was his garage roof collapsing. It happened sometime overnight on Garwood Avenue, just east of Earl Gray School, losing nearly a million dollars per year on the golf courses. And it's not looking like a good day to golf tomorrow, is it? I don't really like your forecast too much. <laughs> hey, I like the way you do it, but well, I just don't you. like it this weekend. Well, tomorrow is going to be a bit of a write-off. That's very, very true. And then actually Sunday and Monday look like we're okay. uh, grabbing some sunshine back. So not all terrible. Good. Do you like it better now? A little bit. Okay, let's get into things, <laughs> shall we? A little bit rolling through tomorrow. Oh, it's not going to be a good day for golf. Maybe a no, good no. day to stay in and watch hockey. I was going to say, no. it's looking like a great weekend to sit on the couch and uh, watch the Stanley Cup Yeah, no Cup kidding. Playoffs. Canada's last hope in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Ottawa in action again tonight? Yeah, they were the only game tonight, and of course, campsite areas will begin on Monday, April 1st at 7 a.m. And it's sure tough to think about outdoor camping when you get weather like we've had. We did end up seeing a light dusting of snow overnight and this morning as winter just seems to cling on to us. There are plus temperatures in our five day forecast. Let's go to currents across the province. It is minus seven in Melita, minus fives for Brandon, and Portage minus three in Kenora. A group of students at Toronto's Ryerson University are coming under fire tonight for an initiation ritual. The so-called hazing had dozens of students crawling across ice in the freezing cold. Here's Cindy Palm with the details and the fallout. Finally tonight, one lucky winner in New Jersey has 338 million reasons to celebrate. Powerball officials confirm a single winning ticket was sold for last night's lottery draw. They plan to reveal more details about the ticket and or the winner tomorrow. Saturday's jackpot for $338 million is the sixth biggest in U.S. history. I would just be happy if I even got four numbers right on the 50-50 draw at the Jets 50 game. Bucks. I, a free ticket is gas always tank. nice. Yeah, something like it's that. a bonus. A free coffee. Even better. <laughs> Roll up the rim. We'll take it. All right. Thanks for watching. Focus Manitoba's up next. We'll see you at 10. Good night.